Ooh, hey, hey, YouTube. I see that lady. Oh um, my, uh, what you call it, dashiki. The African lady with all the goodies in her basket. That's the kind of person I am, a woman I am. I have so much junk. I'm always doing something. Even when I don't have the strength to do it, I, I have to stay busy. So I thought I'd let y'all see what I'm doing now. You know, I have this fascination with sticks. I don't know where they came about. I used to be fascinated with boxes. And then fascinated with furniture on this left on the curb. I'd grab it and take it home and reupholster it and sell it. That's, uh, ooh, I'm messing with something. Okay, let me, I was going to show y'all these. This is what I spend my my time now. I'm, I'm getting an Etsy store for these. I call them wishing wands. He got his eye or she. She has, she has two eyes looking at you. And I made this little bottom out of clay so you don't have to hold that uh, the raw end of the stick. Now here's another one. I was working on them last night and I usually have to, it takes a while for me to go to sleep. There's so much on my mind. But I got, I had this, these two sticks and I was working on the, uh, the bottom, these little things and out of clay and I baked them and I put them on there, but I forgot to take the sticks out of the bed <laughs> with me. And I want to tell you, I had the best sleep and I, when I woke up, I almost rolled on top of the sticks. I said, no. And Every time I go to sleep, I, I'm wishing for a good night's sleep. And so I, they were in the bed when I slept so good. I just want to sh show y'all some of the things that I have here, these sticks. It's a mess. These are the older sticks that I made a long time ago. Um, let's see. Yeah, these are older ones. See his eyes. He has two eyes. These these wands they know what you want they know what you need and they have eyes so they can see this one is an older one and my garage is just full of sticks because each stick has a character this is one that came from colorado and i just started painting it in I have a whole lot of embroidered fabric, this beautiful fabric, and I cut them out and glue them. That's hot glue vines, you know how you have the spider webs. And then I have ooh, tons and tons of fabric, so I cut I cut this one out and glued it onto that one. And pieces like this, see. I got these on Etsy and it wasn't, I mean, three or four dollars because it's not big pieces. But when you see how beautiful they are, you can cut out what emblem you want. And I've always loved fabric. I just, when I go to the fabric store, I'm kind of like a dog just sniffing. I have to touch every fabric that I pass by. I have to rub it and touch it and feel it. So I'm in love with fabric. Listen, because you see all these pillows. I made these pillows years ago, and, and it's, it just fascinates me to see fabric and what can be done with different decorations. And this is something I made. Let me put this stick down because we don't even have a, a crystal. I got to uh, drill holes and wires to put. A nice crystal on the edge and this is the part where you hold this is not not ready to be uh, so but this is what I do in my spare time and nobody bothers me my son doesn't bother me my friend he gets kind of <laughs> well he, he, he know I am because he'll collect sticks for me and bring them here but the other day he was trying to get me to get out of the house he said you don't put them damn sticks down and come on, let's go. 
So I did. I put them down. We went shopping. So now this one is a pretty one. I just got to put the um, the crystal at the end. But see his eyes. Then this one I took the hot glue, different colors. And it, you, if you didn't know any better, you say, ooh, that stick look like it's bleeding. But look at all of that. We got green and red. Then there's a, a seashell right there. But you can see the integrity in the wood. And to me, this is resurrection. When you can hold a piece of wood and touch it and bring beauty back to it after it's tossed in the trash or on the curb this is this is hope and it's no different than making a wish and a wishing well or carrying a talisman around your neck or your uh your beads it's just something to touch to direct your wishes to that's what i'm saying it's a conduit that's what it is and they they don't sell for that much i mean some of them will sell for a whole lot these little ones they're gonna sell for forty dollars but the big one i'm making a big one for myself let's see if i can find that big and it's a big stick where, where are you let me get up and get it you'll see it because i want to heal myself Excuse me, let me see. This is a... Uh-oh, did I knock something over? Nah. This is a log. <laughs> My son brought this. He said, Mama, this for you. You make you whatever you need to make. But this... And this thing is heavy. This is a log. And I'm going to make this be the handle of it. But I didn't want to do too much decorating because, not right now, because I have to drill here. And I have to drill deep, left and right, and then run my copper wire to attach the crystal. And I can't seem, uh, I think I'm going to go to the uh, rock barrel and see if they have larger crystals because these are the largest crystals I can find. Well, it's not the largest, the cheapest, largest crystals I can find on Amazon. And, you know, like these ones, these are the sizes, these are the crystals that these ones are made out of. But, it seems like to me, this one, I don't know, it's too small, but this is for me because this is what I'm going to use to heal myself with. I have... Uh, my pain management doctor told me that they have done everything that they could do and the next thing they could do I don't want to do it. They are talking about putting this remote control thing in your butt, in your hip. It looks like a tobacco, a little tin of tobacco and you have a bunch of wires going to it and when you start hurting it stimulates that nerve and I don't want to do that because it's not guaranteed. And I said, well, no. So they offered me physical therapy. I said, okay, I'll try that. And when I said, okay, I forgot that they offered me physical therapy before. They wanted me to go three times a week for two months. But I had to pay a copay of $20. And I said, and I forgot. And I, after I made the appointment with the lady on the phone, I was making it, I asked her, I said, uh, what's the copay? She said, well, it's going to be $20 a visit. And I said, well, no, because that, that's an extra bill I don't have, and copays is not in my budget, so I'll have to figure another way. But YouTube offers everything that they will be teaching me uh, inside their that little workout thing. I can I can do it on YouTube. So I'm gonna put my own self in physical therapy. But, but this stick and I'm gonna direct all of my energy, my affirmations, and all of this into this stick and I'm gonna heal myself. I'm getting so much better because day before yesterday 
I was talking to my friend, and we was just laughing and talking and laughing. And he said, Mary, what's, you're not even, you don't act like you're hurt. And I, I, I said, oh, I, I'm not hurting. And it was just, you know, sometimes you could forget. And I guess you could favor a leg or a foot or whatever you favor it so much until when it's gone, you still limping. And I said, wow, okay. So now that I know what it feels like not to be in pain, I just have to hold on to that memory and say, okay, and don't overdo it because week before last, I overdid it and took a whole bunch of trash out and it took me a whole week to recuperate from picking up all that trash with this shoulder. So we still got to be careful. But these sticks, and I'm going to get some people, and those who watch my videos, if any of you have bought sticks, just leave a comment and let me know how you feel about your wand. I'm saying sticks, but wand. And let me know how you feel about it. And I've done uh, some several, what you call them, past life regressions. And I used to, I was really good at that. And, and like I said, when pain came, you you just let go of everything. You said, ah, I can't do it. I'm hurting, I'm hurting. But that was a time I made a living, a wonderful living, doing Reiki and uh, massage therapy. And when I, I had all these surgeries, I didn't renew my massage therapy license because massage therapy is hard on your body. But I, I wish I had kept it because lymphatic drainage, you can do that and it's not physical. So, but I don't think I'm, I'm not equipped to go back to school and relearn stuff, but that's what my plans are. I do, I'm working on my Etsy store and I do have it set up, but all the items that you want to sell on Etsy, the pictures has to be taken in natural light. So once I get the inventory of these sticks like I want, I'm going to take photographs of them and do the pricing for them. But let me show you something else. For those of you who are interested in what this old lady does, you know, I don't know where this came from, but, you know, I tell y'all about the voice. The voice was talking to me one day, and the voice implied that I should make a wand just for myself, for my healing. And I said, I said oh, that's a good idea. And it told me to make this, the snake, on the pole. And I say, I can't do that. I just laugh. I say, how the hell am I going to do that? And that's that's the way we talk. I mean, it's, I don't, I'm not disrespectful, but I say, how the hell am I supposed to do that? And it told me to go get the clay, and I ordered the clay. But that polymer clay is so hard, and I didn't know how to do it. And that clay sat uh, on the table for, I know, two weeks before I tried to fool with it. But I, I kind of meditate and I said, okay, you said to make a snake. I'm going to see what I can do. And this is what I end up making. And it turned out pretty good. You got to bake it and it's pretty hard. But what I'm going to do, I want this stick to be gold. But if I can get the right color gold paint, he, he might have to stick, might have to be yellow. But um, I'm going to glue this stick oh, I'm dropping stuff I'm going to have to glue the stick or the snake after I paint him or maybe I should glue him and then paint him I don't know but like I said this is for my eyes only and for my healing but I'm going to use hot glue and put him there and this is the healing for Mary. This is Mary's healing wand. But my friend was saying to leave the snake black but put some kind of glitter on them so they'll be, you know, pretty. But I'm having the time of my life doing this. I got all sorts of decorations, you know, my car shield. I got bags of this stuff. And 
I live alone, so I don't have to worry about somebody bothering my stuff or somebody saying your stuff is in the way and move your stuff out the way. No, this is mine. <laughs> Everything in here is mine. I put it down. Leave my leave my stuff alone. That's what I be saying. And when I don't feel like working on it, it's just sitting here. I don't even have a TV in the living room because I'm not trying to entertain nobody. I could. A company stay calm. They'll stay a couple of hours as long as I could deal with company. And Sunny is the same way. She gets kind of restless when people stay too long. Hey, Sunny, what you doing? You say, you say hi to the people. Say hi. But um, this is basically what I'm doing. I had a, uh, a comment uh, made recently about I should make more videos. And I, I should, and I do have thoughts all the time, but what I, what I do with the thoughts, I absorb them myself, and I say, wow, the thoughts that come through my mind that the voice is mentioning to me, and I say, oh, could that be true? And then after I digest it, I'm so full, and I'm so overwhelmed with the information till I just forget to make a video about it. But I'm going to have to, you know, <laughs> stop being selfish and talk about the downloads or information that I get from this this powerful voice that's within. And I, I'm so thankful. And a lot of you all know I'm ex-church girl, raised, born and raised in the Church of God in Christ. And yeah. It really, well, it was a throw off from Church of God and Christ because the pastor got kicked out of Church of God and Christ because he didn't like their doctrine. He was saying they were worshiping on Sundays when the, the Sabbath, Saturday is the real uh, day we should worship. It was a lot of other this stuff. And so they kicked him out. But he was really uh, a tyrant. And Everybody was afraid of him. I remember some things he said, and he said that, and I took everything he said literally. He said, I don't want no members that know more than I do. You can get out if you think you know more than I do. And everybody sat there, nobody said anything. I wasn't about to say nothing because I was born in there, that church. But as I got older, I understood more. And one time, I'm going to say this, but I'm, I'm not going to say, you can take, you figure it out. Because I have never gotten strikes on any of my videos because I don't make enough videos to get strikes. But I had to be about 15 or 16 sitting there in church and he would hold church. We had church Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Saturday and Sunday, and we have a revival. It was every night. But this particular night, he's sitting in. He wasn't in the pulpit. He's sitting in a metal chair, holding his guitar. And then he put the guitar down, and he says, "You women, some of you women sitting here, a man will eat you up. And a man will eat all your woman parts out." I'm 15, still dumb as a box of rocks. And they, a man will eat you up. I'm sitting there thinking. I say, oh, surely he, he'll cook a woman before he eat her. Maybe he'll eat her fingers or toes or something. I didn't know that's what he was talking about. And can't you imagine this? This is in the 70s. No, 60s, I guess. And I didn't know. I just didn't know none of that stuff. It, it, segregation ended, and we ended up having to go into a white school. And all in the bathroom, the wilds would say, so-and-so, Shelly sucks. Bill eats. And I'd be sitting there, what do they eat? What are they sucking? Lemons and stuff? The white kids would go to school with our socks on. So it was a whole big culture shock back during them days. But this pastor, he would do stuff like that and say stuff. And 
uh, it was just a mess. And the people in the church now is a very few members, but they hate my guts. They hate me so bad because of the book I wrote, Going Home Another Way. And that book was about my deliverance, how I delivered myself from drugs. And it was a diary. I had to write this in a diary. I was told by this voice, write it down in a diary. This was a diary. Nobody, it wasn't supposed to be a book. And I told the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But I, in in the book, when it we decided to make it into a book, it, it we the names were not mentioned. The pastor of that church, we don't call his name. We don't even say the name of that church. But these church members knew I was talking about them. And one of the associate ministers was talking about suing me. I said, I don't, you don't can't get anything. I don't have anything for you to sue. I said, but you really don't want to open this up in the courts because it's a lot of things I didn't say in that book. So leave well enough alone. But it's okay. It's okay. Because out of that book, I found the victory through this book. Believe it or not. And, and like I say, when I was writing, I was writing to save my life. And this old faithful voice because I was been been off drugs for a long time, six years, and still afraid of nighttime. Cause nighttime is when the Jones hit you, and you want to go call your dealer. And, and and I was taking Nyquil, Dayquil, everything, so I could sleep through the night. And I go to AA meetings, and man, if I've been clean six years, surely I could say I used to be a drug addict. Can I say that? I said no. You in denial. You will always be a drug addict. And I couldn't. I didn't want to argue with him. And so he told me that if until I was ready to admit that I was an addict, I wasn't welcome there anymore. So I politely left. And because you can't tell me what I am. Because even the AA tries to use the christians you know as a basis you know make amends and this and that if the bible says let him that stole steal no more god forgives you so why would you wear this crown i'm a drug addict or i'm a thief and the aa they were doing some crazy stuff and it gives you no hope i didn't have any hope long as i was going to them aa meetings because uh, even after 30 days, they give you these little round chips that look like what you play at the casino. And then you get that, but so what? I've been clean 30 days. And when you get your chip, everybody cheering, then your sponsor, and they pull you to the side. I got some good stuff. Got some good stuff. You want some? I said, dog, I thought they were my sponsors, and they trying to get me to go get high again. So, AA but in the place for me but this voice told me that if i wanted to be free from the fear of relapse you're gonna have to write me i said right write about what write about your life and i says uh, i would write but I got a this knot on my finger. I can't hold no pencil a long time. This this from writing, holding the pencil so tight when I was a kid. I can't do that. But I said, but if I had a computer, I would write on the computer. That's what I would do. The voice didn't say nothing else. It just wrote down what I said. If I had a computer, I would write. Man, lo and behold, a couple of weeks or so after that. I, had, I was running a poster shop. It was my poster shop. And Mr. Murphy, nice older white man, he was coming to pick up his sofa. He hadn't seen it. And he owed me a balance of $400 because he had paid uh, $500 for the fabric. Beautiful sofa. Exp expensive fabric. So he came in. And he said, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. He just loved it. So I was having the guys to wrap it in that plastic and getting ready to load it in his truck. 
I told myself, let's go up to the front so I can write out your last receipt. I'm pulling out the receipt book, writing. Mr. Murphy said, Mary, don't write that receipt out like that. In my mind, I said, what What am I doing wrong? It's in my mind. I said, what? He said, I'm going to give you a computer, a printer, and lessons in exchange for this money I owe you because you need a computer for your business. Y'all know how a black woman is about her money. These words were in my throat. And they were about to come out. No, Mr. Mayor, if you can't get in my business like that, I need that money. I, they were there. But then the voice made re me re remember in my head what I said. If I had a computer, I would write. The voice replayed that back to me. And those words were forming in my throat, but they couldn't come out of my mouth. So all I could say was, yes, Mr. Murphy, that's a good idea. I'll take the computer. And <laughs> the next week, he brought the computer and all that stuff and set it up. I'm picking one finger, one finger, one finger. And, just, and he said I was learning real good, so I was scared of that computer shoe. But I learned how to use it, and then I got so good with it. My oldest son, God rest his soul, he said, Mama, I'm going to get you a brand new computer for the shop because that's really what you need. You've learned so much. He said, take this piece of junk to the house. And so I did. I took the, uh, Mr. Murphy's com computer to the house. And the voice is still sitting there kind of on the sideline, like, well, when you going to start writing? When you going to start writing? And then one night, I, I we set the computer up, and I, I said, well, I guess I'll start writing. And I knew how to make a file, a Word document. I knew all of that. I knew how to make a document with a password on it. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I set it up, and, and the, di the document was titled My Diary, and I put a password on it. And that's when I began to write, to write. I told the voice, I said, I don't know what to say nothing what do i say and the voice said talk about your first memory <laughs> and i started writing that but the first sentence i couldn't think i said well hell ain't nobody gonna read this with me and i was thinking you know how people say well i was born on march 11 blah 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 and i said i can't even say that because i don't know what day i was born my birthday but i the sentence opened up they said I was born. They said I came here on March 11, 1954. And once I typed that sentence, I was off to the races. So, man, that, that, oh, man, that, that began to free me. And there were times, because I, I did it chronological order. I, everything happened chronologically. And then as I got... To different parts of my life, the part where my mother passed away, I was only 17. All those, that was painful, but I had to do it. I'm crying as I'm typing and then listen to Etta James. Etta James just, man, she carried me through and drinking wine, Etta James. So I made it, but a lot of things happened. And I, I, nobody's supposed to ever see my diary, but. I had bought another house and I was writing in the diary. I would try to do it every night. But I was at a point where the drugs were, it was overpowering. The part that I was writing, it was like, oh God, how can I write this? And I began to vomit at the computer. And I had to get up, and run to the bathroom. That, that scene made me so sick. I ran to the bathroom and left my diary on the computer. I get up the next morning, my youngest son reading it. I said, oh, I can't tell you what I said, but I said, I left my diary on the computer. And I told him, I said, baby, I did not intend for you to see this. He said, mama, I knew you were on drugs, but I didn't know it was like this. He done read the whole diary. And he said, it's going to have to be a book. And there, there that's, that's it. That's how it came, and I didn't even know how it was going to end it, because he helped me as much as he could, but I didn't know how it was going to end, and some characters started coming back in my life, and he would tell me, he say, 
she you gotta write her in your story she's a character i said really he said yeah she's a major character this woman name was mary and she was a hard drug addict she came on the scene and long story short that book is what saved me and i know a lot of people going through uh addiction and different things and you have if you're going through this thing you got to fight and you got to stop by any means necessary you got to be angry enough to tap off your fingers or whatever you got to be just that mad because you are the one that's causing this stuff you got to be ready to stop i remember when i really put a, a crusade on that i'm gonna stop i would I knew in my mind I'm getting off work and I got $50. I'm going to my dealer and I'm thinking to do this. And that voice was me in the background saying, uh, get that dope money to this lady on the corner. She's got three kids there and her baby pampers full of uh, feces. Do that. <laughs> I'd pull over and walk across the street, get a woman my, my dope money. I said, this is what I got to do. And the voice said, yes, by any means necessary. So there were times I would buy my drugs, bring them home, get ready to set it up and do it. And the voice said, you better fix it. And I knew what to do. I'd take a hammer and smash that pipe. And i say, am I fooling myself? I smashed the pipe. And then that old eagle sitting in the ego in the background say, you know, you smashed up the pipe, but you still can take a beer can and smoke dope if, if you want to do it. I said, oh, shoot, I forgot. So here I am fooling my own self. I go get a beer, pour the beer out, put the fall and all that, and then put the dope there and smoke through the can. And you got to have smoke a cigarette, get some ashes. And choking and going on, I said, man, you, you you got to really outwit your own ego. So you didn't win that night, but you still was trying to suck on a, a beer can to get high. So the next night, you know, it's coming back. We finna fight some more. After breaking up so many pipes and flushing drove down the toilet, I was winning. I really was. And it was, there were times when I lost, but then I regained and fight some more. So you're not going to make me take my uniform off, my hero cape. I'm going to still fight. And lo and behold, it's been, ooh, 1994. And I'm so thankful. But I don't know how other people did theirs, but mine was not easy. It was not an easy fight. But I didn't intend to get off into that, but <laughs> I can't talk what I want to, but... I'm not going to, as 30, I have never made a video this long. Anyway, we'll talk again. These are my sticks. This is my my stick I'm making for my health. But I love these sticks. I really do. I feel the energy that's coming from Mother Earth. These are some of my marbles and things. I got so many things come from Five and Dime and Dollar Tree. They have a lot of different things you could use. But anyway, guys, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll just tell, give y'all some more information. But go out there and get that book. Going Home Another Way. The Journey Begins Within by Mary E. Sims. It's on Amazon, okay? I'll talk to you guys later. See you next time.